In turn one of this game of Peel Croquet, Jeff Sue starts out with a line shot on hoop three with the red ball. The graphic shows the clip positions, which suggests that a reasonable line shot in the first turn of this game would be with red or black. Stephen Mulliner then lays a very short tice from Abonk, pretty much forcing Jeff to shoot at it in turn three. The reason is that once a roquet is made in the first four turns, then the peeling requirement commences. And if in turn three, Jeff roques Stephen's ball and does not make a peel or a hoop in that turn, then in fourth turn, Mulliner gets a lift to position. It is, but I'm Mulliner won the toss and elected to go second, well, setting up this situation. See the, the with the opening, opening yeah. Well, red needs to go through that wicket the right way. Yes, right? yeah. And in in a, a leap, it has to go through the. You'll wicket. notice that there are no corner pegs. The advantages of shooting Steve six Curry, inches outside the corner, such as could, hoping for a subsequent double target or avoiding a corner cannon, are far outweighed the by the disadvantage of turning every basically. lift to balk into a lift to position. And since every turn it ends in at least a lift to balk, the corner pegs are superfluous. So with no peel nor leap opportunity, all Jeff can do is spread everything out as far as possible since Steven gets a lift to position in turn four. This game is designed to prioritize peeling skills over long hit-ins and leave setting, thus the extended balk lines and the initial placement of the clips to allow peeling slash leaping from the very beginning. As I'm sure you've figured out by now, a leap is just peel spelled backwards and is done by peeling any ball backwards through the hoop that it scored last. This graphic will appear at the end of each turn showing clip positions, the hoops made by the striker ball in the previous turn, any leaps or peels, and the type of lift and the ball that was chosen to take it. For instance, since red is four hoop three to leap red, Stephen would have to peel it through one back, since the last hoop that red would have scored would have been two. Since the striker can make two hoops before he has to do a peel or a leap, the pattern that you will see evolving is make two hoops, followed by a peel or a leap, then make two hoops and another peel or a leap, ad infinitum, or at least to the peg. Should blue get behind red on this hoop shot, he then would have the opportunity to peel it through one back, i.e. leaping it through hoop two. Stephen Mulliner, of course, needs no introduction to the international croquet community, being, among many other things, the Secretary General of the World Croquet Federation, and he won the World Championships in 2016 on these very lawns. This game nearly went to the time limit of two and a half hours. I've edited the video down to what I hope is a bearable hour and a half, but I think you'll find it worth your while because of the quality of the play of these two world-class competitors, the novelty of the format, 
and the intricacy of the ending. All that's been edited is ball retrieval and prolonged deliberation, of which there was an abundance. After Stephen hopefully makes hoop three, he'll have to get a peel or a leap before he can make another hoop, and you'll notice a peely and an escape ball sitting up at hoop four, because yellow is for hoop four. And he is required to perform the peel before he can make the hoop with the striker ball. And unlike in a peeling break in normal AC, the players are moving their clips as soon as they peel or leap anything so as to avoid confusion. And now he can make one more hoop before he has to get another peel or leap. And now he needs this peel on black through its hoop five before he can make any more hoops with blue. So the Peely stuck, and having had red, there's no possibility of going back and using a cannon to finish the peel, so all he can do now is set a leave. And because he's made at least one hoop and at least one peel, the lift is only to balk.
And because of the extended balk lines, to the extent that these lifts are spreads, they are more horizontal than diagonal. And the graphic now shows the new clip positions, the number of hoops made by the striker ball, any balls peeled or leaped by the striker ball, and the lift assigned to the ball that the opponent elected to play. Since no leap, peel, nor hoop was scored in that turn, the lift is to position. That's all. He can only make one back now before he has to get a peel, but you can see that he has black nicely in the jaws of five. So with a good pioneer at two back, he should have no trouble extending his break. Right. Right. Okay. And there are no hoop lifts in this game, so making one yeah. back Great. has no That's specific perfect. consequences. And now he can make yeah. two more hoops. Oh, that's great. I see. Yeah. But that's right. Okay. All right. That works great. Yeah. There are interesting options here. Steven gets one more hoop, then he has to get a leap or a peel. Right. Yellow is for five, so it's he okay. could peel it Makes back no through right. three no back, i.e. leap it through four, and extend his break that way. Yeah, 10% of he. That's right. That's He's right. not leaving That's himself good. in the Sounds skate wonderful. balls, so he obviously doesn't plan to do that. <laughs> All right. Thanks a million. His next option would be to 
to continue to break would be to peel yellow through five. But clearly he wasn't planning to do that either. But with the black clip on six and the blue clip now to be on four back, he could actually just finish with a delayed triple, making six and one back, peeling four back, making two back and three back, peeling penult, and finishing with a rover peel and peg out. And I do have to give Jeff Sue credit for bringing the possible triple peel finish at this point to my attention. So Blue made four hoops, got in one peel, and the lift again is to balk. And the leave is again pretty transverse because of the extended balk lines. Jeff will elect to play red. And as in standard AC, any lift can be declined if a lesser reward presents a more favorable position. Sharif said he was going to try out some new drones, but this is ridiculous.
Red is for three, blue is for four back. So after black makes one back, he can use one to peel and the others in the skate ball. An especially convenient way to extend a break in this format. And he's probably actually thinking about the triple peel finish that we mentioned earlier. In standard AC, he could have jawsed blue and gotten away with it. But in peel croquet, he had to get the peel in order to extend his break. With only red left to roquet, any mere mortal would probably bail out at this point. Mulliner is, however, used to running sextuples. And in that context, Red was not an unreasonable two-back pioneer. Is Sullivan? No. And he is a former world champion. This is Stevie Moore. He was he won a world championship here in '16. Okay. And he's the president of the World Croquet Federation. He's famous. What? He's famous. He runs sex tuples, blue peels. And he's fun to video because he's so fast. I don't ever have to shut the camera off. You know. What's his last name? My goodness, I don't know whether Wiley would have classified this as aggressive or Monte Carlo style. But Jeff must be wondering if he's ever going to get a chance to make a hoop. Oh, that's Robert Fulford? Yeah, oh, yeah, he doesn't play as much as he used to, but he's still very well respected. Yeah. Leaving blue to be peeled through Pinot and extending the break if he's able to make three back off yellow. And with red nicely positioned as a four-back pioneer, the triple peel finish is still on. Yes, now see, yellow is for two. That means the last hoop that it made, I mean, it's for five. The last hoop that it made is four. So he has to peel it through three back. He has to back peel it through the last hoop that it made for it to count. And he's for three back, so what he was hoping to do was get a back peel on it. But now he's got a tough hoop shot. Oh yeah, he, I think he will try to go straight. Uh, didn't work. Okay. Okay. So Black made three hoops, peeled blue through four back, and then 
the lift to balk is declined because of the short shot that yellow has on black. And at this point, the only hoop that's been scored by red and yellow is a peel of yellow through four by opponent. Putting Blue in leaping position, since his clip is on Penal, that way he can extend his break after he makes five and six with yellow. And a rush leap is just as valuable as a rush peel can be.
there's quite a bit more thinking about what comes next in this format. Most of it has been edited out. Black's clip is on three back, so its last hoop was two back. So he'll peel it through one, which by definition is leaping it through two back. Not quite. I don't think so. No, it came off the side. Blue's clip is on four back, so he may have been thinking about leaping blue again. Not to extend the break, but just to move blue's clip back one more hoop. Now he has to set a lead.
your first strike. <laughs> the lift is the contact, so he really wanted that ball in the corner. And the lift to contact is declined for the more advantageous lift to balk. And he chose to play yellow because red is sitting over by hoop three, which is its hoop. And it's also the second hoop of the break that yellow will get if it can make three back. That way he can peel red and extend his break.
A lift to contact once again declined because of the rush provided by the fortuitous lift to balk. Since pegging out would be less than wise, there's no break to extend, and that peel was designed just to avoid giving a lift to contact. And since peeling is largely the point of this format, one is not allowed to peg out an opponent. You may peg out your partner ball, and it is counted as a peel if you do that. If you do go through the motions of pegging out, as it were, the striker ball before pegging out partner ball, it doesn't go in the box. It just stays on the lawn where it stopped rolling after it hit the peg, and its clip stays on the peg, and the opponent gets to use it. That's why it would be unwise to peg out the striker. Everybody calls me. In regular AC, this game would basically be over <clears throat> because peeling yellow through Penult and Rover while taking red on a nine hoop break to the peg is a challenge Jeff Sue would meet most of the time. However, to keep this break going, he has to get at least two other peels, probably peels or leaps on opponent. Jeff has played more up to his own high standards in the last couple of turns. He likewise needs no introduction to the international or American croquet audience, being a perpetual McRobertson Shield team member for the U.S. and holding multiple American championships in various formats, the latest of which is the USAC Nationals that he won in Palm Springs last month. Uh, just out, obviously he was trying for the rush on yellow back to hoop five.
He needed that peel to make another hoop.
Controlled zoom, so I don't have to reach up here. To we need to talk about that because the live streaming I did from the, the Nationals in Palm Springs, I used, I had an encoder and a, and a modem and stuff because the Wi Fi sucks out there, but. Um, Livestream is the platform I use, and they yeah, and they they will help us set the whole thing up. You know. And I think I'm going to be in a position to help support this pretty soon. And this is what I want to focus on: is promoting the sport too. Yeah, so that'd be good. Well, I when I. I'll set up the meeting so you and I can sit there for two or three hours and figure out sure. what direction we're supposed to yeah, go. Yeah, good. So, I, I do. Thank you very much. Since blue is for the peg, it could be leaped by peeling it through hoop five, and yellow, of course, is for rover. So it's the same peely, leapy pair that we saw earlier, where he can use either ball to extend his break and then use the other one as an escape ball.
That's got to feel good. Our master English gardener flown in specifically for this purpose. Darn, if he'd gotten that rover peel, he could have finished. Yeah. <laughs> 
appeal and then you have to get rushed back to Penn Hall. Yes. This is possible. Yes. For a while I was thinking there's no reason that's going to do it.
The rubber peel was done to make finishing on the next turn easier, maybe avoid a lift of contact, not to extend the break. Once again, he's not going to peg out red because if you peg out only one of your balls, that ball stays on the lawn where it stopped rolling after it hit the peg. The clip stays on the peg and the opponent gets to use it. So tactically, you only peg out when you can peg out both of your balls. Trying unsuccessfully to leap yellow through Rover, the last hoop that it was peeled through. I think Moliner is auditioning for a role in a remake of Chariots of Fire, that British classic from the early 80s. But I think he hasn't had red yet, so no, bounce off. So he's not going to finish. But maybe he can. He's not going to finish the turn. Or he's not going to finish the game. Not going to finish the game. He'd like. Oh, because he. That's right. He hasn't had appeal, so he. So you get contact exactly. The game is designed to demonstrate. Sorry about the partisan exuberance there. Because he didn't get the peel of blue or the leap of yellow, 
Jeff gets a lift to contact. Where any ball can be the striker ball. Oh, right. Yeah, both of those balls are good. So he'll take contact with one of Steven's balls and try to get behind Red. Yes. These two, yeah. These two. Yeah. And Danny is Danny Johnson has done very well. Um, <laughs> And uh, Mike said Sharif played a perfect game against him. I didn't see it. So Sharif, Sharif, I just know the game for first time. Which is what basically got us all just into the game. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, he's about to do that. He's about to do that. What are the consequences of this game? All this What or what? There's no consequences. Didn't even show up on first baseball. No, I mean, you're not. It's a bad one. Oh, this is so good. So long. These two are going to be. So there really isn't any consequences because it's preordained. Pretty much, I think. Remarkable game. Holy moly. <laughs> Proving once again that it's not over till it's over. Sue was down 18 to 6 when he finally got in and made a game of it. And of course he started with five of those. And not that we need more analysis in croquet, but this format certainly lends itself to that. For instance, the difference in the game of two hoops was more than accounted for by Sue's two leaps on opponent and or Mulliner's two peels on opponent.